Hey guys, Matt here. I wanted to do something a little bit different today. I wanted to make a video where I literally just talk about my five favorite video games. I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I love them, what I love about them, and uh, hopefully it'll inspire you guys to check out uh, these games because I think they're absolutely awesome. So, first game, Bloodborne on PS4. I absolutely love the Soulsborne series, and Dark Souls 1 is probably one of the most important games in my life. It taught me to enjoy games in a totally different way, getting satisfaction out of difficulty and uh, enjoying just being absorbed in a world rather than having everything spoon fed and designed for you. As much as my first playthrough of Dark Souls 1 is one of my favourite experiences in a game ever, Bloodborne for me is the peak of the Souls series. I love how From Software reworked the gameplay ever so slightly from Dark Souls so it's faster and rewards aggression rather than the slightly slower pace of Dark Souls. There's less RPG to it but really all of the potential builds and weapons are so fleshed out that I genuinely have more fun revisiting Bloodborne to experiment with less options. The story and setting for me is just absolutely unparalleled. I personally haven't played a game that delivers on the Lovecraft theme as much as Bloodborne and the way it sort of baits you into believing it's a Victorian gothic horror game before throwing you into the twisted world of nightmares and amygdalas is amazing. It never gets spoken about, but I genuinely think the second half of Bloodborne is one of the greatest twists in video game history. I think if you include DLC, Bloodborne has the best boss fights in any video game I've ever played. The base game is packed with memorable fights, Father Gascoigne, Vicar Amelia, Bretius, Marta Lagarius. When you add in the Old Hunters DLC, it's just absurd. Orphan and Lady Maria are insanely cool original bosses, but fuck me, Ludwig is just incredible. It subverts the whole night going crazy with an intense as hell beast first phase, and then a nightly second phase, which is just as hard but in a totally different way. It took me four hours to beat him on stream, but it was genuinely one of the most memorable moments in my video game life. The actual story itself is full of really interesting characters with twisted motivations and tragic failures. I feel like the Soul series is always getting praised for its non-linear or abstract storytelling, but Bloodborne is the game where it just comes together so well. It's just easy enough to find the important plot moments and the item descriptions that tell it, but it leaves just enough to the imagination that people are still discussing the implications of it today and making new discoveries. In my opinion, it's the best action game ever made, and dear lord do I hope we eventually get a 60 FPS PS5 version. That would be so good. Number two, Golden Sun, and Golden Sun The Lost Age on Game Boy Advance. I can hardly believe I was nine years old when I got it for Christmas one year, and honestly, I knew even then that I had something special on my hands. For those of you not familiar with the game, it's a Game Boy Advance JRPG, but dear lord is it so much more than just a handheld RPG. It's easily the best looking game on the console, and in my opinion, it's one of the most ambitious games of all time. So for the true experience, you need to play through Golden Sun 1, which is a 30 hour game, and then use a super long password which transfers your save data across to Golden Sun The Lost Age, which is another 30 hour game which is effectively the second half of the story. The simple fact that Camelot went into the development process looking to make a 60 hour grand role playing game on the Game Boy Advance is just crazy to me. It's got huge cutscenes where the dialogue runs for 30 minutes, massive set pieces that use all sorts of graphics, and dungeons that legitimately take hours to beat. It's just all so not what handheld games are about, but it's absolutely majestic. 
It might just look like a simple turn-based, Dragon Quest inspired RPG, but the gameplay itself actually has a really unique system which kind of takes influence from the very best in old school JRPGs. Essentially, as you explore the world, you discover little elemental monsters called Jin, and by equipping them to your characters, you gain additional stats and special moves. If you decide to use the moves associated with the Jin, they'll become set, and you'll be able to use them as ammo to summon. The summons are sort of massive, graphical, explodey super attacks that are some of the most strong moves in the whole game. Where it gets interesting is that when a Jin is set, waiting to be used in a summon, you lose the stats that you would usually have from having it equipped. So as you build up to a huge summon, the risk of you taking massive damage or being unable to react to something is higher. It's an absolutely awesome system of balancing risk with the rewards of exploring the world. It encourages experimentation and strategizing on the fly and it's just so good. Just take a second as well to appreciate how amazing these graphics are. Remember this is running off a 256 megabyte cartridge on a console with a 16 megahertz processor and 32 megabytes of RAM. It legitimately looks and animates better than some indie games that are around at the moment. And my god the soundtrack. It's written by Motoi Sakuraba, who is essentially the most creative and prolific Japanese composer. The things he manages to get the GBA sound chip to do are incredible. Soaring battle music, tense dungeon themes, or atmospheric story moments, it's all just amazing. I literally still listen to it all the time. If you like JRPGs and you haven't checked this out before, my god, get hold of it and play it as soon as possible. It's an absolute masterpiece and it's the best handheld game of all time. Number three. Pathologic 2. Before we even discuss it, let me say that I totally get that not everyone would love Pathologic 2. But for me, this is a game which is a complete masterpiece. I've never played anything like it before. It's made by a small Russian studio called Ice Pick Lodge, and in my opinion, it's the only game I've ever played that perfectly blends gameplay and story. You know that term ludonarrative dissonance? Like how Drake in Uncharted can be a super nice chipper guy, but also murder like 500 people without ever stopping for rest? Yeah, this game is the opposite of that and it's an absolute nightmarish joy to play through. Play as Artemy Burak, returning to your hometown out in the Russian steppe to answer a mysterious letter from your father. The tutorial is like a sort of crazy David Lynch fever dream, and by the time you recover from all that craziness, your father's been murdered, a sentient plague has started ripping through the town, and the citizens are on the verge of a race war. It's an absolute mess, and it's up to you and Artemy try and work out what the hell is going on and just try to survive. The gameplay itself is a crazy mixture between so many different genres. It sort of looks like an RPG with dialogue trees and quests to complete, but the moment to moment gameplay is more like a survival game where you're trying not to starve or get infected or dehydrate on top of not getting beaten to death or mugged. It's brutally hard and barely explains any of its systems, so the whole experience is weirdly kind of similar to Dark Souls and how you're just meant to dive headfirst in and feel things out, but boy, does it reward doing that. A game like Pathologic could easily just be a big mess with all its weird overlapping systems and unclear quests, but it all just works perfectly like a symphony orchestra with everything in harmony to create these amazing, emergent moments. Because the game is so punishingly hard and literally gets harder the more you die, every single close encounter is heart pounding and every betrayal or unexpected moment is more frightening than any jump scare in a horror game. Being infected with the plague on a sliver of health breaking into boarded up houses, desperately trying to find supplies, is literally one of the most frightening and tense experiences I've ever had in a video game. On top of all this, the setting is just so beautifully weird and original. It's unlike any other game I've played in just how unconcerned with being like anything else it is. 
It's original and imaginative, exciting and frightening, and strangely uplifting in places. I'm absolutely not doing it justice. But if you're gonna check out any of the games I talk about here, please check out Pathologic 2, because it's an absolute modern classic, and I'm sure people are gonna be talking about it for years. Number four, yeah. Planescape Torment. <laughs> What can change the nature of a man? I shall wait for you in death's halls, my love. So Planescape Torment is the best story I've ever experienced in a video game. And the fantastic thing is, is it literally only works so well because it's a video game. It was always one of those games that sounded like I'd really enjoy it. I was always putting it off, saving it for a rainy day. But when I eventually got round to playing it, I was absolutely hooked. And I'm pretty sure I ploughed 30 hours into it in about two weeks. It's an old school isometric RPG by Black Isle, who would later turn into Obsidian. While you might think it looks like Baldur's Gate or Fallout 1 and 2, it's essentially a complete subversion of those kinds of games. Combat is basically non-existent. In fact, I'd advise if you play it, set the gameplay onto the easiest setting possible so you can just blitz through the small amount of mandatory fights. Instead, the game is based around a really awesome charisma system where you're rewarded for investing your points into dialogue options and exploring some of the huge conversation trees with your companions and the NPCs that you meet. It's essentially a sort of PC RPG visual novel, but oh my god is it good. The basic premise is that you're the nameless one who wakes up in a crypt and has absolutely zero memory of who you are or how you got there. The only thing you do know is that you're supposed to meet a man named Sharon and that you can't die. That's right, you are quite literally an immortal in this game. And if you ever do die in battle, you just end up right back in the crypt again. It's the setting which makes this game so intriguing to play. Sigil, the city where the game is set, is located in a dimension called Planescape, which is basically a hub between every single dimension and world and galaxy in existence. It means the city is just an absolute mess of different people and races from different worlds all tussling together to make a life. There's huge stalking demons that run bars, drones that mindlessly repair and improve the city and magical tattoo parlors that imbue special abilities onto the people that they're on. It's all just an absolute joy to explore and find out about. It's essentially the spirit of fantasy and it's just overflowing with crazy creativity. For example, about a third of the way through the game, you have to pass through a specific street to progress, except that the street is pregnant and that the drones have done repairs so it can't give birth. That's right, a street is pregnant. You help take down the repairs and sure as anything, the street gives birth to a new city block which allows you to pass through. It's just absolutely bonkers in all of the ways that you want a fantasy story to be. I won't spoil it, but the conclusion of the story is also absolutely incredible. It obviously starts off as a sort of typical, I've got amnesia premise, but where the story goes is totally majestic and it answers all of the mysteries about the nameless one that you might have in such a satisfying way. It's genuinely got some of the most effective writing I've ever seen in a video game, and the amount of emotions it gets out of you, despite being just text-based, are crazy. It's a 10 out of 10 game, and it's the best isometric RPG in my opinion. Number five, Chrono Trigger. Okay, now a classic to finish it off. My favorite 2D game of all time, Chrono Trigger on the Super Nintendo. I first played this on emulation back when I was around 13 and it just totally blew my mind. I've played it countless times since on DS, various other emulators, Steam, and now luckily I even own a proper copy for my NES, which is particularly special as it never actually came out on PAL regions. In my opinion, it's just the perfect RPG and I've yet to see anything come close to it in terms of just how much of a pure video game it is. 
It's around 25 hours long, which might sound kind of short for an RPG, but it means that the game is really tightly designed and there are never really any moments where the story lets up or becomes uninteresting. It's perfectly designed so you never need to grind and you're essentially always at the right power for the game to feel challenging, but fair. This might make it seem like it's a fairly linear game, but the incredible thing about Chrono Trigger is that it's actually almost open world compared to something like Final Fantasy. The game involves visiting various moments in time, and once you unlock the ability to freely travel through time, you can essentially tackle most of the moments in the plot whenever you want, and thanks to the game's abundance of endings, you can even go straight to the final boss if you want. There's all sorts of side quests and hidden moments you can find if you want to look for them, and everything is always tied into the characters and plot so it never feels random or tacked on. In terms of the characters, where to even begin? The art is done by the legendary Akira Toriyama, so everything has that amazing Dragon Ball look to it, so it's hyper distinct and full of character. The writing is absolutely amazing, and for a game which is as whimsical as it is, the whole plot is a perfect balance of light-hearted adventure and darker, wider issues. It really feels like you're experiencing a nostalgic fairy tale. It's everything you could want from an RPG. On top of that, for me, this is the greatest soundtrack of all time. It's a collaboration between Yasunori Mitsuda and Nobuo Uematsu, and it's outrageously good. There's so many tracks which are just utterly iconic and just take you immediately back to that part of the game. It was a fairly late release on the SNES, and I really think that it's the pinnacle of 2D RPGs. Yeah, we'd get Xenogears and Star Ocean later on on the PS1, but while they're absolutely amazing, there's something about Chrono Trigger being the swan song of the cartridge era that just gives it a romance that those games don't have. The game's an absolute testament to the idea that restrictions breed creativity, and if you haven't played it, I'm honestly jealous that you get to experience it for the first time. So there you have it, there's my five favourite games of all time. What do you guys think? Have you played them yourself? If you haven't, please do check them out. I think they're awesome, obviously. Let me know what your favourite games are in the comments down below. I'd love to know what are those games that really just kind of vibe you, really get you going. It's nice to just talk about things that you love. You know, the internet's full of so much negativity. Let's just talk about the things we love for a bit. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next time.